Joining me now is Maya Espinosa running to be an actual superintendent of public structures instead of a boss of public schools. Maya, welcome again. Thanks so much, Todd. Glad to be back with you. Yep. So we're going to do two things. Obviously, we're on the radio. Folks are hearing this on the radio and we're recording this for video. Uh, so we'll need to be descriptive, but we got to be careful because we're going to go back to the loathsome topic of Chris Rakedahl's perverse and pornographic sex ed that Jay Inslee signed. You are going to help stop as superintendent of public instruction. So we also need to reject R90 on our ballots. That's right. If you're as disgusted with this effort as we are, you want to reject R90. That's an important point to make. Yeah. So last time we were together, I guess, let's walk people through what we did. There's a video on the site. Uh, you and I together went through, uh, let's just talk, the, talk through what we did when we did it last time. Yeah, last time we took a look at some of the actual curriculum material and went through some of the things that are supposed to be age appropriate and demonstrated where we did not think these were age appropriate. So yeah. that's a real good video. I would encourage people to go back and watch. I mean, yeah. it's just good for people to know what exactly we're talking about. We're not being alarmist. We are taking actual material from the curriculum and just pointing it out and asking folks, do you find this age appropriate? Right. And we talked about uh, teaching kids in seventh grade um, that if you're not ready to have intercourse, it's important to get into a bath naked with one another. Uh, I'm watching you respond. And every time we talk about this, you and I are both disgusted. We talked about... Uh, so, oh boy, I didn't remember the other topics. Um, oh gosh, remember the 12th grade senior project? How young, you know, can you, like, a competition to have to sleep with the youngest possible yes. student? This was a, a fictitious scenario that kids had yeah. to work through. Yeah. It, and bizarre. And all of the focus on confusing kids about what sex they are, what um, gender they are, a person with three holes, and most girls have. And so we went through that. That was the actual curricula. We showed the text uh, from that, flash in three hours. Uh, today, I guess we better give a real distinct parental warning. I think so. Yeah. Uh, so what are we going to look at? Well, gosh, yeah. If you have kids nearby, here is your... 30 second warning to get them out of the room. Do not, uh, this is not appropriate. And you know, as a mom myself of young kids, I'm always having to, you know, make sure my kids are not around and behind a closed door because this, this stuff that's supposed to be for my kids' ages, my middle schooler and my fourth grader, I don't want them hearing. It's disgusting. It's pervert and it's not age appropriate. So yeah, hopefully yeah. this has given you enough time to be able to get your kids out of the room. Warning, caution, parental advisory. So today, we're, Todd, we are going to be looking at some of the third party materials that the curriculum itself links to and gives kids, gives children access to. So I think we're going to be looking at some of the websites, for example. We know that, what, earlier this year during the pandemic, the superintendent's office put out an email with links to, you know, how to maintain relationships during COVID-19, how to sext. This is links coming from the superintendent's office. You were as outraged as I was at that one. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's Lori Dills. Uh, she's also sent out a link to an article explaining that it's a good idea for kids to watch pornography uh, because it can help yeah. kids who are marginalized. She said that on government on a government email. Um, yeah. Oh, she says she's not endorsing it. She's just promoting it for use in the schools. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, Clearly. Yeah, craziness. As if pornography needs more <laughs> promotion right. to our kids is yeah. terrible. Yeah. And they never talk about the downside of uh, porn addiction, how it changes people's minds, uh, the structures of their brains, young boys becoming violent, girls becoming objects. Yeah, right. The victimization and, and you know, imagery that we're putting on young women. I mean, yeah. this is how they're expected to behave or, or this is, how, you know, what's, what boys are expecting of them. That Yeah, pornography is very damaging in a lot of ways. Yep. All right, uh, you have my permission to share your screen if you want to start. Um, this is going to be coming. This is, again, third-party stuff. Uh, it's often recommended. It's coming either from Flash or 3Rs. Those are two pre-approved curricula. Chris Rakedahl, Jay Inslee think these work within the schools um, the, the, everywhere, all of Washington State. Um, and by sharing screens, we can show uh, this curricula. Yeah, well, I was hoping to pull up the curriculum page, but I'll just tell folks on 
page 44 of the three R's curriculum, which is available online. It, again, just Google it. But so one of the links that they link to is a website called Scarletteen. So here we have the Scarletteen website. Um, you know, for me as a Latina, this one jumps right out how toxic masculinity harms Latinx people. Fun fact, Todd, a vast majority of Latinos do not prefer the term Latinx. <laughs> I, there's, even, there's even an article in The Stranger that says, don't call them Latinx. So this is, you know, very much, uh, I don't know, out of date and probably toxic in other ways. But then we scroll down to advice. Um, this is supposed to be a website for, you know, a uh, the real world, sex ed for the real world. And this is linked from the curriculum itself, from the three R's curriculum, page 44. I think this is at the top of that, that page there. Um, no, sorry, it's the third bullet. And this is lesson seven for 10th graders, 10th graders. Again, my daughter is 12 in seventh grade and I'm not looking forward to your classmates being directed to these websites. So let's take a look here at some of the recent advice, shall we? Let's do that. Mm, let's see. So we've got questions about siblings, coming out as bisexual, a feminist, being a girly girl. Um, hmm, this one, I'm almost 16, but I've never felt any sort of sexual or romantic attraction. Uh, okay, so for 16-year-olds, we're having conversations about this. Right. Overprotective parents, of course, got to right. have information there on how to how to navigate your over overprotective parents. Um, this, okay, 15 year. This is terrible. I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> This is bad stuff. And no, it says I'm a, I'm a 15 year old girl and a virgin. I've never had a boyfriend or anything. My family's a bit Catholic, uh, a bit Catholic, a bit Catholic. Okay, that's mm -hmm. interesting. Um, and wait, what's this one? I'm a lesbian, and now my boyfriend recently came out and socially transitions, meaning now I don't get it. Now wait, wait, is it the is a girl now wanting to be viewed as a boy post transition? And my now boyfriend came out. And, and well, okay, I'm confused, but this is for, this is for um, 16 year olds. I, so I think, yeah, maybe it was a, another girl that um, now he's my boyfriend. Now he's my boyfriend. Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't have an issue with L being trans, but I don't feel anything for him anymore. Way to confuse kids even further. Wow. My goodness. Yeah, this is an appropriate uh, discussion at 16. This should be the main worry uh, taught in schools. Um, what's this? I only want to have sex with women, but not date them. Am I bisexual? Okay. The, the real concern for me here is that we are linking from a school site right. to some of this. I mean, this is... Uh, I, it's one thing for um, maybe, I don't know, to, to find this as, as an older adult maybe yeah. or a recent adult, but for the schools to be providing a link to websites like this that talk about minors having sex, I mean, this is really, really concerning for me. And it's not at all, you know, whether it's LGBT, that has, you know, that is of less concern to me as these deep conversations about the sexuality of minors. Yeah. And then this, if I only want to have sex with women, but not date them, am I yeah. bisexual? I'm a straight woman. At least I think so. I'm generally more into guys, but I find women sexually attractive. Being in relationships with women doesn't really appeal to me, but having sex with them does. Do you, know, do you think that maybe the concern might be less, are you bisexual, than is there something really missing in your life? And maybe this right. is a conversation that relationship wise happen with parents? Right, exactly. Like respect-wise, I don't want to date these women. I just want to, okay, for 16 well, years old. Isn't that supposed to be what, what part of this updated curriculum is, is healthy relationships? I haven't seen anything about healthy relationships. This is like, yeah. you know, um, one night stands. Right. 
And well, they do say it's about making friends, uh, that it's teaching kids how to make friends. But again, it's just I only want to sleep with someone doesn't imply friendship at all. In fact, in, I think it implies usership, in my opinion. Are these adults giving children advice too? Well, often it's kids. There's, they do the thing where the kids become sex counselors. Oh, and, right. And they were recruiting them to, oh, in my 20s. I don't know. Yeah. That's, should, that's also very concerning to me that you've got, you know, more experienced adults, perhaps giving kids advice on how to pursue their sexual, you know, um, mm, lives. <laughs> This is real. Oh. So this was one link, one, one. one, one. link on one site. Um, one. Let's see. Of course, there's another one on here that I wanted to, to point out. This is bullet number two on that same website, or sorry, that same curriculum page, 10th grade. Site is sex etc. etc. dot org. Oh. And it says in this art, in this uh, lesson, Todd, it says uh, that they're going to be getting internet enabled devices or allow your smartphone use and invite students to the following sexual health websites. Yep. And there's a lot of instances in the curricula where they, um, it says to the teacher, teacher's guide, make sure that the IT staff has allowed this website or this YouTube video um, because it's otherwise blocked for kids' safety. So you actually have right. to lift the porn filters for some right. of this stuff. It's incredible. Create yeah. eight areas in your classroom where students can gather around one of these devices, because that leads to mature conversations. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> so here we have Action Center. And this is one of the weird things that I've heard, um, and I forget which one of these curriculum we're talking about, but um, it was saying that they are trying to promote social change through sex ed? Yeah, through... Uh, there's a group called SECUS, and it's my understanding that Chris Rakedall has signed our state on. I believe we were one of the first, if not the first. It's my understanding he signed our state on and that they view sex ed as a tool for social change, which would mean if the sex ed is the tool, then the kids are the machinery of social change. Yeah, right. right. And here we have Action Center know your rights make a difference communication tool your say okay and then sex ed oh this should be good sex terms yeah should we do it sure oh, i i actually first i heard a term and it's going to come up here and i i was on the air when i was reading it i i mean i was like just reading it it's called rip and read i'm like i'm reading this and i had to stop and say what's that mean and then i i'd like there's a recording of me going oh my gosh Oh like, no. Oh, yeah, that's what it means. If you go to yeah, it, it'll be it'll be in here. Oh great. So we have, yeah, what would you like to learn about? Um well, if you just roll down, this just starts with the numbers. There we go. More. Okay, I don't know. Do I want to know what seven eleven is? I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is either. Okay. Got it. That's important for kids to know that. Uh, yep. And and if they already I'm sure know that it, that won't be a joke. Gosh. Well, <laughs> and secondly, if they already know it, it's a, probably a good idea to normalize it. Like this is a good idea. Hey, look what I see on the bottom left hand side. I see the resist fist. Make a difference. That's the yeah. same fist. That's fist. that's social justice resist fist. That's interesting. Right. That was up yeah. here too. The action center. And yeah. this is. Yes. Uh, again, linked from the curriculum. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so, of course, let's see what kind of sex terms they have listed here. Oh, great. Okay. That's the one I had to look up. We can't just, even. No. Yeah, this, no. Uh, <laughs> we want to know. This is a oh, joke. Oh, oh, Just stop. Oh, my gosh. Is that a term? I, I've never heard of it. Apparently it is now. Oh. <laughs> why? why? Why are we teaching kids this? Chris Rakedall, why, would, why would Chris Rakedall put this in the schools? Why would he do this? I'm, you can't I'm at a loss that. for words. Yeah. And we're, I mean, we are grown adults here. This is, 
this is outrageous that we would be sending 10th graders yeah. to these websites for their educational purposes. Right. Let's see what this terrible, a derogatory term for girls that frequently perform. Why? Oral sex on male. So, so now we have derogatory terms we're teaching children. Good. Let's Again, teach. another one I've never heard of. So clearly, oh gosh, oh gosh, this is really, you know, TMI doesn't go far Whoa. enough. What did you see? No, I, I, this, I tell you that the, okay, I'll say it, Wait. getting wet. That reminds me of, no, getting wet reminds me of the girls who suffered through this 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 garbage in their classrooms right and, their and was... the male teacher was teaching a, a mixed sex class on how boys can use their fingers to get girls excited and then one of the girls started to say that phrase and i said no no you don't have to get detailed i i get it Please and don't. well yeah. the, the, i mean they were so brave to they went to testify in olympia about what this has done to their schools Okay, so I think we know what that means, and and that's awful. Fear-based sexuality program. Fear-based sexuality. Oh, great! These are oh. educational programs that are usually part of abstinence-only until marriage efforts that use scare tactics to try to keep teens from having sex. These programs discuss only the negative, dangerous parts of sex, shame young people who have found some type of sex and exaggerate the risks of sexual activities to make sex seem more frightening. Fear-based sexuality programs. Oh, so That's understand this parents, this is a third party resource from the curricula that Chris Rakedahl um, spent two years obsessing uh, to put into the schools while the math died and, and school performance died. There was no distance learning plan at all. He walked the halls of the legislature. He lobbied for this. Planned Parenthood has called this their bill. This is a third-party resource from the curricula. This is recommended to kids. These are the sort of websites they're sent to. If you teach your kids that you should wait to have sex until you're married uh, because of maybe religious reasons, um, maybe a combination of religious reasons and biological reasons, such as you can get pregnant or such as you might be drawn to be more attached to someone than you should be at your age, mm -hmm. because those things don't last. You might develop biologically developed feelings right. for someone that your stage of life is not ready for. Um, so if it, you're teaching abstinence to your kids, you are using a fear-based sexuality program, apparently. Right. Related terms, comprehensive sex, ed, give me a break. Abstinence Let, only education, abstinence-based or abstinence plus sexual, okay. So, uh, and remember that um, comprehensive sex education is pleasure focused. Um, they view all kids as sexual beings from the moment they're born with the right to pursue sexual pleasure and the ability to consent from the moment they're born. So all of this is communicated either neutrally or positively. Like for instance, there is that phrase uh, for a girl who performs oral sex on lots of boys. They yeah. presented it as a derogatory, but it's just the phrase. Look, I, hey, I'm a sinner like every other sinner. Uh, and probably if you are going around and sleeping with a lot of people, no matter your gender, probably that communicates a concern. And it probably communicates a, a it probably communicates um, a psychological concern um, and a mental health concern if this is going on a lot at that age. We know it leads to more alcohol use, drug use, uh, truancy, prison. Shouldn't there be some concern, like, if you're doing this a lot, shouldn't there be like, hey, maybe it's not a good idea to do this with a whole bunch of different people? Right. That's what's missing here. I mean, no parent would disagree, you know, that we should be teaching healthy relationship habits. And, you know, we certainly should be doing that job as parents. But if schools wanted to do that as part of a sex ed curriculum, which focused on the basic tenets of reproductive health and healthy relationships, you would not have the outrage that you see from parents right now. It's those like us, that once you dive into the actual material, you know, we get accused all the time of taking some third party thing that is unrelated. No, it is related to the yeah. curriculum. It is related to this bill 
And this is why the referendum is on the ballot. It doesn't matter how many links in the chain or how many steps it takes for us to find this information. For your student, for your son or daughter sitting in class, they're now being directed in the class to pull up a laptop and pull up these sites and these terms in yeah. class. I mean, yeah. how, how ridiculous. Yeah. It, this is why opt-out does not go far enough. Well, and you're the second, one kid, right, that's yeah, and, pulled out of here. The rest of the class is learning this, and right. the conversation will not stop there. We know that. Right. And also, of course, Lori Dills has said that sex ed should be woven through all topics. Uh, right. That's what she would like to yeah. see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. How do you opt out of that? And what yeah. position does that put teachers in for them right. to have to make sure the kids are opted out of wherever it's woven into different curriculums? Yep. So this is one of, you know, let's see, this is eight or so sites here that yeah. this links to on this page of the three R's curriculum. Again, this is the seventh or 10th grade lesson plan, lesson number seven. And it requires these computers with access and the pop-up or the uh, porn blockers down so that kids can access this in class. Yeah. Um, so this is what's going to be normalized and enculturated. And right. there are, there's a reason why the bill was written the way it was, which is that it doesn't mention curricula like this. It, 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 it uses this phrase, comprehensive sex education, which is actually a brand name. They did everything they could to hide this from you. Uh, as parents, they and Chris Rakedall sued you, and he actually lost the the, right. uh, which is astonishing that any the Seattle Supreme Court can give a decent ruling, and they did, and you made a great argument. Rakedall lost because you were pointing out that the that the curricula teaches sexual positions for fourth graders. Mm -hmm. So um, there's some other ones that when you're ready, I'll show a couple that 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 I found connected to the curricula. So you let me know. All right, do it. All right, you ready? Let's get over with it. Yeah, I know. Uh, so I mean, I've got to show it. And I'm thankful, Todd, that, that you are, you know, using your platform to be able to expose what's going on here. Yeah, because it's you. easy, to, like you said, to look at the bill and say, well, there's nothing in here about that. There's nothing about sexual positions for fourth graders in the, yeah. in, in the bill. Yeah, That's yeah. not what this is about. This is the actual lesson plan. Yeah, so this is Scarletine. This is a website that the um, the curricula sends people to is um, Scarletine. And here's a question. Uh, now, again, this is for high school kids. My boyfriend and I are 18, very comfortable with each other. We took things slow, somewhat due to my discomfort in the religious section. See, there we go again. But it's it's always negative on religion, partly right. to make it more We're genuine. Protective parents, yeah. religious. Yeah. Um, and so uh, skip forward a bit. We're delving into the world of sexual activity. I want to steer clear of PIV sex for pregnancy reasons and Virginia reasons. But the other day, we were exploring each other's body, and before we knew it, we were having anal sex. Thankfully, my boyfriend used much lotion in the absence of lube and blah, blah, blah. I don't even want to get to the rest of it. Wow. Uh, so we want to take a day and just explore the possibilities, but is there a, a thing is too much uh, of a good thing or is too much of a thing? Or should I worry about that before we even consider more animal sex? Thanks. You know, one of the neatest, most interesting things about sex from my perspective is that what people do and don't enjoy is diverse. Okay, so again, 18 adults, and this is to be taught to kids in high school. Yeah, then oral grade. sex becomes a more Probably common, popular year. sex activity. More people talked about it and they did it in their sexual lives. So the stigma decreased. I highly suspect the same thing will happen with anal sex and time, particularly if we get less homophobic as a culture. And so now they are applying this to just gay culture in their own, in their own you know, curricula. But this is certainly things that I think most parents do not want their kids uh, reading. Right. And, and being taught. Yeah, um, the specifics of how to have anal sex. Are you kidding? Right. Um, three things on getting to the bottom of things. I don't want to click on the link. This is um, a note that you can use a, and by the way, they really are excited to have you share this on social media. Uh, right. You can use an electric toothbrush as a sex toy. Wow. Here you yeah. go, kids. Yep. Back. Did you leave school today? 
electric, uh, your hands, back massager. And so savvy about ways to DYI. Does it imply that masturbation is to be ashamed of? Again, it's a parental conversation. And I don't, I'm not in the business of shaming people for sexuality. I'm in the business of saying, why is, uh, I, what, do you know there's such a thing as a masturbation sleeve? What is that? What is it? Sleeves are cylindrical too. Okay. I don't oh, want to read that no. with you. But you can use a toilet paper roll. Wow. With latex gloves, vibrators in disguise. The toothbrush is what, moving. What are we accomplishing with this? Electric what? razor. I know. Oh my gosh. Well, what we're accomplishing, I think, is yeah. normal. What, what, what we're really accomplishing is showing that Scarlatine or the cool parents, because it all, so often goes back to my parents are really religious. So they oh, don't yeah. want us to have sex. So remember, uh, sex ed as a social change, tool for social change. That's one. It's okay, more... social change with an electric toothbrush or a pickle, it looked like, yeah. with a condom on it. Yeah. What in the world? This is some words about um, having safe words in case you decide to have rough sex. For kids. Linking to. Now, this is the problem with providing a link. This is much worse than that third-party book. This is a link with dynamic content, with external links. I mean, this is really irresponsible to be putting in the hands of children, to be directing them during class. And I just, I'm, this has so far escaped safe sex, healthy relationships, STD prevention, that's what I'm wondering. What are they trying to accomplish? But we know what it is. Social change through so, sexuality education. Separate the parents from the children. Show yeah. the children that the parents don't want you to have. Well, for instance, your parents don't want you to make your own sex harness um, in which you assert a sex toy. But mom, I learned it in school. Right. Spanking. If you want to spank someone, because hitting is a good idea to teach someone... Sure. Violent yeah. sex, hairbrush, kitchen implements, flip flops, floggers. Oh. Um, so, what you're teaching kids is to be very sex focused. Sex is about pleasure, chasing right. orgasms. It's not about intimacy. It's not about establishing a special relationship with a special person. Um, it's. I mean, yeah. I. I mean, look. If adults want to hit each other with, you know, <laughs> hairbrushes and such. Right. But I, I, I don't know, maybe it's me, the, maybe I'm just old and I think of that as a bit of a pathology, but uh, it, with adults, it's one thing. With children, it's far another. This is one, I feel bad for being straight. Hmm. I have a weird identity problem Nobody seems uh, uh, that nobody knows seems to share. I have lots of uh, LGBT friends. Seems like lately it's a bad thing to be straight. I identify as mostly hetero, at least for now, but my friend group also looks down on straight relationships. The way many have bigoted views of LGBT people, Q people, I feel sometimes embarrassed about my orientation. I have no idea what to do. I don't think that the fact that I'm straight detracts from how weird and wrong all this is. Perhaps I require this from perspective. Uh, so again, um, I don't think it's a surprise that kids would feel bad about being straight when you look through curricula that is, you know, showing all sorts of exploration, not just in terms of orientation, but playing with hairbrushes and toothbrushes and group sex and sexting. And so there's right. that. Um, then this is to, well, we've been to this site, but I found one. Oh yeah, this is, this is, this is one. I'm 13 year olds, uh, years old and I really want to have sex. Is that normal for a 13 year old who wants to have sex? It's normal for people to start thinking about having sex when they reach their teens. Even though you feel turned on, you may want to have sex. It doesn't mean you're ready to have sex. There are a lot of good things and bad things that can result from sex. Sex is just one in many ways to share intimacy. If someone isn't ready for sex, they might feel regret later, realize they didn't. Okay, well, at least they're pointing that out. Some fiends, might, oh, here we go. Some teens find masturbation can help, can sometimes result in an orgasm, sometimes it doesn't. Um, most likely if you take your, if you, if you make sure you're ready for sex, then it will feel good and you won't regret it. That's right here at the bottom. I see that. 
most likely if you take time to make sure you're ready for sex, then it will feel good and you won't regret it. Okay, there to me, right there, there's comprehensive sex education. It will feel good. Mm -hmm. It will be and pleasurable. That's the point. Right. And that meant you were ready for it because it was physically enjoyable. That mm -hmm. meant you were ready for it. Never mind the biological chemical changes and we're back yeah. to back to the resist fist. Potential pregnancy consequences. <laughs> right. And this is like this conversation here. Uh, again, I mean, maybe this is a great conversation to have with the parent. It just doesn't, you know, it doesn't belong in the schools. And I don't know, maybe I'm not that excited about kids, you know, thinking, well, if an electric toothbrush works, what about something plugged into the wall? Come on. Yeah. No, yeah. it's not in here, but okay. So there's, uh, it, it, what you're seeing here is what, have you've done interviews with, um, with, with reporters. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure some of them have been very fair to you. Do any of them seem to know that this stuff exists? Did they seem, did they seem the least bit curious that this exists? Because I know you did a radio interview with some people who, when you left, they made fun of you saying you, that you're making it all up. So Yeah. No, and, you know, I'm used to that. And because they think, well, you know, you overprotective, religious, you know, conservative parents, you can just opt out your kids. Doesn't that solve the problem? And they don't get it, you know? I mean, they must not have kids in school or kid, or have had kids that have friends because this does not stay within the classroom. And this teaches them how to use their phones to go online. What do you think's gonna happen? You know, so this is why, I think this is part of the reason why people are pulling their kids out of public school. I know I hear that from parents. They're, they're dodging this all together. But yeah, I mean, it's pretty, People, especially people that have interviewed me, you know, they want to say that we're just making a big deal out of nothing and we're taking mm -hmm. one thing. And I'm glad, you know, for this opportunity to be able to walk through the countless examples of where, no, I don't find this age appropriate. And moreover, this is so beyond, again, sexual health, re healthy relationships, the basic tenets of reproduction, or STD prevention. These things are so far beyond that. And yeah, most people will not take the time. People that are interviewing, yeah, wanna, wanna paint me as overly protective and conservative, just like some of these articles are saying. Overly yeah. protective parents. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to look here um, while we're talking, and now I can't see you there. You, you're still there, right? I'm here, I All see right. you too. All right, so I was gonna look real quick without, boring everybody i'm very curious if they left a cookie on my machine i'm gonna i'm gonna take a look and see if they have left the tracking cookie on my machine i'm gonna guess they did let's see here all cookies and scarletine we looked at scarletine right yep oh gosh will you look at this let's see what do you have here let me show this to you um Go back to screen sharing and this, I'll show you this. All right, look here. Two cookies. Ah. Hmm. So that's interesting. So what that would mean uh, is these cookies can be used to retarget ads. Right. Now so, what's going to happen? Right. So now your kids have been at Scarletine. They, maybe they shared the... Uh, I really enjoyed anal sex, but should we do it again? Or maybe they shared the I'm 13 and I want to have sex, but maybe I'm not ready. Or maybe they've shared the DIY sex toy. Um, certainly, you'd never see like a Planned Parenthood ad, follow them around. Or if they've read, for instance, about um, an article that might make them gender confused or gender defiant, they'd, Planned Parenthood would never send them an ad saying, hey, did you know in Washington State, if you're 13, you can get hormones, cross-sex hormones without your parents' permission. You can yep. come get birth control. You can get an abortion. Come the facility. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, all kinds of, I can think of other nefarious things that could be done or that advertisers would want to buy that data for. Right. It's, no. You know, I mean, it's not to keep kids safe. It's right. not just birth <laughs> control. I mean, human trafficking, we're, we're a hot spot here in Washington. Yeah. And so to have this data of people or IP addresses on kids' phones of having visited these 
quasi porn sites. Yeah, I think that's opened the floodgates. I'm glad you looked at that. Yeah, I'm gonna look some more. Um, I'm gonna look some more at what they put on my machine, uh, but I won't do that here because I value my privacy. But uh, there was also this, and we'll, we'll wrap this up. My uh, the um, the Genesis Project, uh, to whom I've I've given money and I need to again. They was started by cops um, mm-hmm. to give women and girls a rebirth out of um, sex trafficking, so they get them out of the life. Uh, they get them a place to live, job training. Uh, and the cops, I could talk to one of the cops who found it. He said, hey, you know, we realize we keep arresting the same girls. Why are we arresting the, arresting the same girls and the same women? Um, why don't we help them? And we know the business. So yeah. do you know they've seen a huge increase in sex wow. trafficking during the lockdown, during Jay Inslee's lockdown? Wow. And so, and they've also seen a decrease in donations because people don't have the money. So this is a particularly important time to understand what they want to do digitally, where they want to send these kids, the profiles they can build. Um, and just remember that, 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 that Chris Reichdahl, uh, Maya's opponent, I mean, he walked the hallways pushing this. I, I, I've, I've heard that from a lot of uh, legislators. Have you heard the same thing that, that this was a big focus of Chris Reichdahl's? Oh, yeah, I know it was. I mean, we saw him down there in Olympia. He testified in full support of this, and he still doubles down on why this is important and really cites some creepy stuff like that girls especially are maturing faster. I mean, this is just weird stuff that he keeps talking about as, re- oh, yeah, multiple times. And I always get the heebie-jeebies when he talks about that. He, he says that. <laughs> oh, yes. Girls, especially in middle school, he says, are maturing faster. I'm, and that's why we need this sex ed curriculum. This is, go, uh, yeah, I mean, any of the debates that we're in, it, this, is, this is an honest point that he makes. And to me, it just comes off as creepy. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay, because I'm the dad of a, a daughter. Um, <laughs> and... I also know what society. And, yeah, <laughs> um, the what entertainment and, and porn and and this junk is doing to girls. I mean, the girls feel a pressure to act like they're twenty and to act sure. like they're they're they're. I mean, I've talked to girls. Um, you know, not my daughter, but I, I've talked to girls who've said, "Look, you have a choice as a girl. You can be a porn star." Um, a bookie or, um, uh, or nothing. Mm. And so Rake Dahl says middle school girls are maturing more quickly. Mm-hmm. Wow. And that's why we got to rush to get this curriculum out because they're, they're the target of, of being bullied because they mature quicker starting in middle school, especially he says, it's just bizarre stuff. I mean, and this is the type of like, you know, thing that gets you right. Same face. Exactly. When he says stuff like that, but he, uh, you know, one of these times he canceled a a zoom meeting that he was supposed to be on for a chamber of commerce. And he tweeted, you know, I'd rather fill, help me fill in the blank. I'd rather blank than participate in another zoom meeting and then said, keep it clean. What? Who was, what? What did he think people were gonna put in there? Where is this guy's mind? It's really bizarre that this is the thing that he wants to focus on in education of our, and again, this is a comprehensive kindergarten through 12th grade sex ed curriculum. And it, okay. it, it, yeah, it's disturbing to say the least just on the surface, but when you dive down and let's actually pull up the curriculum, let's look at the lesson plans. Let's look at the links that they are opening in class with our kids on their devices. Did you know that parents, when you were asked whether or not you'd like to opt your child out? It, I, thank you again, Todd, for taking the time, making the space to be able to, to talk about this because most people want to gloss over it and say, well, you can opt out, right? Not a problem. No, it is a problem. And this is a whole culture shift that really is operating under bizarre circumstances. And needless to say, my opponent is funded by these organizations that are profiting from this curriculum and the services offered through this curriculum. And they are spending 
beyond what they can max out to him, they are doing hundreds of thousands of independent expenditures for him and for this referendum to make sure that parents approve healthy, you know, sex ed, it, healthy age appropriate sex ed, I think is what they, they claim it is. It's not age appropriate. Take one look at the curriculum, look at your middle schooler and say, is this appropriate for my kids or their friends to be learning on school time, on school grounds? It, it's outrageous. Yeah. And I'm saying that, that you're given this opportunity to be able to look at this and do a deep dive on it. People need to know. Yeah, they do. So reject our 90, vote for Maya Espinosa to replace Chris Rakedahl. Um, Maya can do a lot at superintendent's level and a lot to improve the schools in a general sense. And so we've talked about that. Um, if you do the, uh, the you know, double deal, you, you reject R90, this thing is gone. Maya's in uh, as superintendent and then uh, can bring some sanity back to this. Okay, well, uh, I know you're a new mom and I want you to go be a new mom of a beautiful baby daughter and, yeah. um, and a growing family. So we sure appreciate your work. And this is a very brave battle because there are super rich, um, very questionable funding sources uh, pushing this that um, I contend are involved. This is me talking uh, that I contend are involved in real evil. So I appreciate you joining us and uh, we'll talk soon. Thank you, Todd. Really means a lot. All right. Thank you.